Yeah, so um, thanks for the opportunity to present. And um, I will be uh, presenting together with my colleague, Rick. Um, Hessel could not join us because of uh, other commitments, but uh, he extends his regards to you all. Uh, we, uh, within the framework of uh, the BMO Hydro Hub project, we are operationalizing uh, discharge monitoring uh, with what we call the Opium River Cam in low resource settings. So our idea is not that we are doing something completely different, but we are trying to find ways to operationalize um, yeah, monitoring of discharge in a more cost-effective way um, and make it available in low uh, resource, uh, resource settings. So that's what we do. And our idea is probably also to see whether there could be other ideas from uh, people on the call uh, to see how we can improve it. Or maybe they have some libraries they want to share for us to also include that in the operational setup that we have. Uh, we, we have um, a YouTube um, link. Uh, so that also demonstrates how uh, the Open River Cam um, is used. Uh, so people can also uh, visit this uh, after the workshop um, and look at what we, we do. But Rick would have a very short demonstration as to how the platform works. Uh, we did this together with um, not um, just African partners, but also European partners. So we have uh, the water board in Limbeg. We have the water board uh, in Tanzania called the Wamiruvu Basin Board. We also have the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute, of course, which is um, a very known uh, institution uh, in Europe. Um, and then also we have TU Delft. Uh, so I'm partly affiliated to TU Delft and then partly to uh, TAMU. Um, and Hessel also works uh, for Rainbow Sense in TAMU and the Tyrus. Um, yeah. So uh, what we're doing is uh, basically um, looking at small to uh, medium sized streams and then using IP cameras and then based on uh, the open PIV libraries, try to derive um, the velocities and from there try to um, build a rating curve. Um, and this of course is important because um, it's easy for people to do it with all sort of hardware that they have that is not sort of specific to a particular hardware and also uh, can be scaled easily because of the low cost of um, setting it up and also maintenance. Uh, so this is something that we built, for example, for the uh, Chukiko uh, River um, in Dar es Salaam. So uh, who are our target audience? Um, of course, uh, we say that we don't preach to the converted and most of you here know why now we are trying to use uh, uh, other velocimetry methods you know, to um, estimate discharge is because of the difficulties uh, in using traditional methods and also the risk uh, associated with it. So uh, we wanted to have a much more demand-based, web-based, easily de deployable, and a solid uh, database system, which um, people in low resource uh, countries can use, but also even in much more developed countries, because there's a picture of um, the setup that we put up um, with the first cam camera and a very simple uh, pose and stuff in Limbeck in the Netherlands. So uh, how's the back end like? Uh, basically, uh, we take a movie with an IP camera, we extract the frames, we do some corrections um, using the lens parameters. So that, of course, depending on the camera you are using, you'll be able to derive these parameters and then you do the corrections. Uh, but also importantly, we do a bathymetry. Um, and then we also have ground control points uh, to be able to auto rectify um, the images that we have to be able to do the correct estimation of velocities. And of course, based on that, we are able to then estimate um, our velocities discharge uh, with a bathymetry and then therefore our rating curve. Uh, one thing that we do is that we do um, the reading of the staff gauge that we install manually. So you can see um, in your view, so this is a manual staff gauge that was constructed locally. Uh, actually, it was painted because when you put, uh, let's say, uh, other staff gauges, they either get vandalized or they get stolen. And so we have uh, concrete um, staff gauges that are now painted on uh, just to ensure that it minimizes uh, the vandalism. 
And then the software management, uh, what we're able to do is that we're able to page size using the map interface to make it easy for people to, to use it. Also sort of, you can visualize the entire portfolio of uh, videos that you have, and you decide on videos that you use to process to build your rating curve. And of course, uh, you can also then create the results for a particular site that you need with the, all the movies that are available for the site, or you select some of the movies for the site of interest. And then, of course, we also keep a timestamp to help us to know how your bathymetry is changing. So you build up on existing ones or new ones, and you can also visualize your bathymetry to see whether it makes sense or there are some things that need to be corrected. So at least there's some sort of interaction uh, as you do this processing. Uh, the bathymetry we do with uh, uh, an RTK, so real-time economic navigation supply system, uh, this is less than um, uh, 500 uh, euro because also this is was developed within another project sponsored by the EU called Twiga. Um, so we sort of building low cost sensors to help um, the water boards and meteorological agencies with uh, observations and survey works. And we also use this to then take the control points as well as the camera position for us to do the auto ratification. Once that we've, we've been able to get the bathymetry right and we now take uh, the movies we are able to upload the movies uh, of course uh, doing the processing with the uh, open PIV library and then of course person waits for a few minutes then of course they can see the results and um, we also have developed on top of the open PIV library uh, spatial and temporal filters so that we can sort of take out spurious velocities uh, or places that are obstructed due to vegetation uh, to be able to have a reliable velocity estimates. Uh, once uh, you upload your videos and uh, you sort of run it, then you're able to see your rating curve. But of course, if you see some points uh, that are outliers, you can exclude them in the building of your rating curves, or you can add additional points, um, which are out, like take out additional points that are outliers from your rating curve to develop one that uh, suits your needs. So, of course, you are on the site, you see what was happening, and you can tell whether this makes sense or not. And at least it helps you to build a more reliable uh, rating curve. Often when you are in Africa, rating curves are updated. Sometimes more than five years, uh, curves have not been updated. And with the very high level of sedimentation in our rivers, it is really essential that we have a system to really update rating curves. So we think this is a way to sort of do it. And of course, the additional benefit is that we also use the low cost uh, RTK units uh, to do simple uh, bathymetry. We can also use uh, spirit levels or dumping levels to, to do this easily. So these are also available uh, locally. And then, as I said, the sites, uh, for example, for the ring, um, the gauge plates, uh, you don't need to really uh, import one. You can build this locally and there are people to do this um, uh, very easily. And also we have a very good uh, documentation uh, that we can build on, um, on this site. So openrivercom.readadocs.io, uh, uh, you can see some documentation uh, on this. So basically what we want to say is that uh, we don't want to sort of uh, reinvent the wheel, but we really want to build on existing scientific findings and libraries that are freely available because we're using an open source software. And, um, of course, we have built some filters, but probably there are other filters that uh, we can still use to improve um, the methodology. And then uh, we are also looking at how we can sort of automate the staff gauge readings. At the moment, somebody has to uh, read it. So you take the video, you have to take note of what the gauge readings are, or from the video, you can then estimate what the readings are, and then you have to manually put that in as you process your images. But we think that there are ways to do this automatically, which would enhance um, the, uh, the use of the software. And also if there are adapts who want to sort of uh, use the data sets that we have, we can share the videos so that you can also uh, use that for the comparison and see how uh, we can build on the method that we have developed. So at the end, our main aim is that we really want to use um, camera-based observations with uh, very cheap and cost-effective um, hardware and this should be done by local people using local device and using open knowledge. So that is uh, our idea. Uh, I'll hand over to uh, Rick now to give us a short demonstration. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Frank. I'll just show it very briefly in, in one minute. Uh, we have our, our, our portal. It's now running on the cloud, but you can also uh, run it locally through Docker. It's very easy to, to install and run. Uh, there's a couple of setup steps that you'll need to do uh, once for your site. So for instance, with the bathymetry, uh, you need to enter the results uh, that, you, that you've got from using the, the tools that Frank explained. Uh, then after your site is set up, you can start processing the movies. So you can just upload them. We want to include uh, automatic uh, reading them from an FTP as well, but that's currently not there. And then once your uh, uh, movies have been processed, you can select them and create a rating curve with it. Uh, once you have your rating curve, you can also inspect the individual movies. So let's say I want to look at this, which is a slight outlier. Then I can look at the movie and I will see the lens corrected snapshot. Uh, and also I can see, it's not noting right now, but I normally I can see the PIV results uh, coming in as well. Let me just check if it loads right now. Yeah. Okay, so here you can actually see the results from the from the PIV uh, analysis on the on the movie. Uh, and then if you decide that you want to exclude it, you can just uh, click on the point to exclude it, and the rating curve will automatically update. Uh, that's all for the quick demo. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. I think uh, I, I love it. I like the idea of, of making it simple and, and, and cost effective. So um, does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'll kick off with uh, just how, how I'm just interested to know how widely it's being used at the moment. How many sites do you have installed and in, in what locations? Uh, so at the moment, we have it uh, installed uh, in Dar es Salaam, in Tanzania, and also uh, in Limbeck in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, also trying to now scale it, uh, hopefully, to um, Zambia and also Ghana. But uh, we have two sites at the moment. OK. And is it available to other countries that are you know, perhaps already more developed, but, but starting out with surface velocity methods? Yes, I, I think uh, that's a good question, Nathan. Yes, and that's why we actually chose a site in the Netherlands, uh, which is a more developed country, to show that it's not just applicable for low resource settings, but we think that um, the low resource settings would sort of benefit more uh, than countries that can uh, have more sophisticated uh, instrumentation for uh, surface velocity measurements. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I also note your, your, your comment about sort of sharing resources and files and, and you know, testing out different, uh, you know, videos with different systems. I think that's a, a common interest for lots of people in this, in this workshop. So hopefully we can explore that further and come up with some solutions. So does, does anybody else have a question for Frank? Yeah. Yeah, Nick. May Alex, I may ask a question? It's Alex. Yeah, great. Uh, Frank, I have a question. You said that uh, your platform is also dedicated to maybe handle other codes and to test uh, multi multiple codes. I think it's a very good idea to have not only one LSPIV code, but several and maybe also PTV and STIV. But do your platform handle uh, any programmation languages? For example, FUDA SPIV is free and open source, so maybe we can share some libraries, but we are, the codes are in Fortran, and do you handle this kind of language, for example? Uh, Rick, can you respond to that? Um, yeah, good question, Alex. Sure. Uh, so our software is open source. Uh, you can just uh, retrieve it from GitHub. Uh, our current implementation on the back end is just in Python, uh, but we, we can, of course, support uh, calling other, other scripts from the from the back end that, that should work as well. 